Aloha, everybody, and welcome to part four of Sonic Unleashed. We are now replaying the HD version of this game, and we're going through its one Apatos Night level. I know the level's called Windmill Isle, but, you know, I always associate the levels with the continent they're supposed to be on, and it's way easier to remember the continent name because it's always on, like, the main world maps and everything, so I always just call it Apatos Night, even though I know it's Windmill Isle Night, I guess. Um, but anywho... As I mentioned before, the HD version has you collecting medals, and if you're not collecting the medals, well, there are certain levels you won't be able to play. You need, I think, a total of 60 Sun and Moon medals in order to reach the end of the game. Uh, it might be higher, it might be lower, but, um... When it came to the daytime Sonic stages, I always make that about platforming and speed and going through the level as cool as, it, as I can. And I don't really worry about expo exploring the areas, because it's not really great for that kind of gameplay anyway. You can't rotate the camera very well when you're daytime Sonic. They hide some of the sun and moon medals in the stupidest places. Uh, like, in the daytime level, where you were plowing through all the tables and the robots earlier, before the robots and tables, there was like this alleyway that you had to go to that no one would realistically go to, and... You know, it's just dumb to find medals in those kinds of levels. It's not really well designed for exploration, the daytime stages. I will fully admit that. Uh, but the Werehog stages, they're a lot slower paced. They're more combat heavy. And so this is where I start looking in every nook and cranny I can to find all the Sun and Moon medals. And I do know where all the Werehog medals are. Uh, so, and there's just enough in all the Werehog and Hub World areas that you should be able to make it to the final level in the game just fine, uh, looking for them here. So, for daytime stages, I won't worry about it, but with nighttime and hub worlds and stuff, I will be keeping an eye out. But, uh, ju just a tip, if you're gonna get Sonic Unleashed for your Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3, you gotta look out for these things. They are necessary to complete the game. So when you're the Werehog, look everywhere that you can. If you see a vase, smash it open. There might be something hiding in there. If you see a door, see if you can punch it open. You know, just try and move the, rotate the camera when you can. Sometimes it's fixed, like this particular area. But uh, just try and sh keep an eye out. Otherwise, you're not getting anywhere. So here we are at the HD version of the Werehog levels, and um, again, the thing that makes it better than the Wii version is that it's a hell of a lot more combat heavy, and I think it's a lot more satisfying when it comes to the platforming and stuff. Like, um, when you grab a ledge with the X button, you can immediately hold the A button after grabbing that ledge, and the Werehog will do this amazing jump right afterwards. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> So, holding X for a ledge, and then holding A as you come to that ledge, and he'll jump up it really fast. Uh, the Werehog has a much easier to do sprint. In the Wii version, you have to double tap the control stick in order to make him sprint. In the HD version, all you have to do is hold the left trigger down. So it's easier to sprint, it's easier to climb around areas. And um, the combos and stuff are just way better in the HD version because you utilize three different buttons in order to do attacks on people. You have a long range straight attack that's the most powerful. Y button is your power button, but of course it's not as wide. When all of these little tiny blob creatures are surrounding you, you usually want to push the X button because that's when he, he sends his claws all around him and you can get a lot better of a of a group attack thing going on, you know? Um, so you can alternate the attacks. If you push the pause button and go into the status menu, you can see, like, the move list, and there's all kinds of cool moves. They even have some fun names. Like, one of the moves, I believe, is called Shohagken. <laughs> Where you basically do a Street Fighter Shoryuken, only with the Werehog. And, you know, it's clearly supposed to be a Shoryuken, because they called it Shohagken. So I think that's kind of funny, but uh, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. I mean, I don't really memorize a lot of stuff when it comes to the Werehog. I generally just mash. You can B 
beat these guys simply by pushing X and Y over and over and over again. You don't need to know any advanced moves. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's nice to see that their combat is at least better, and you can, there is a lot of stuff you can do. It's not just a stupid game like Sonic 06, where you just homing attack, homing attack, homing attack, homing attack, homing attack, until the fucking cows come home. There are, you know, actual moves here. It does have a variety to it that, you know, it can keep things a little more interesting than usual, but, uh... Yeah, I mean, what's there to say? <laughs> I'm already bored of the Werehog, and I'm only on, like, the first world. I I'm sorry, guys. I, I don't know what to tell you. I just don't like this gameplay all that much. It's, it's fine. It's playable. By the way, don't go in the water, because Werehog cannot swim at all. I mean, it's Sonic we're talking about. Obviously, Sonic can't swim, but, uh... You know, just that the little ledge was all you had. If I fell into that water at all, that was it. Game over. Well, not game over, but I would lose a life. And, uh, you know. I remember I fell for that the first time. It's a big open body of water, and I forget that I'm not playing a someone who isn't Sonic. You know? I, like, I assume the Werehog is different from Sonic for some reason, but it's not. It is Sonic. But it's like, oh, big body of water. Surely I can swim just like Knuckles could in Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> oh, I fell in it and I died. Shit. <laughs> it didn't look that deep. I thought I'd just walk in it. What the hell, Sonic? It's just, what's there to say? You know? This is why I definitely will be having guest commentators uh, for a lot of the later Werehog levels. Because, I mean... It's got your God of War tropes. I mean, you flip a switch by mashing a button, you open a door by mashing a button, you beat up things, and oh my god, can I talk about the most repetitive, stupid thing ever? You're listening to it. The battle theme. You heard it a lot in, in part three, you're hearing it again in part four. Every time the Werehog runs into a whole bunch of new enemies, da 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 you know, every time you run into a group of enemies, even though every level has a really great music track, you know? They're, I really love what they did with the nighttime music because there's so much jazz and so many real good instruments being played for each area that you want to kind of appreciate the music and get to like it, but you can't get to like it when every time you run into one of these Gaia monster creatures, it's just da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na, on you, you know? Like, God damn it! let me appreciate the music. Why is this battle theme always turning on like seven times in a level? Good lord, what decision making? I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, like, I guess the action should be heart pumping when you're in a fight. But like, no, no, quite frankly, no. I mean, you don't see God of War do that. It's not like in God of War when monsters come up, it's just like, da no 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 you know. It's like whatever it was. You could be kind of calm and you could still take out a minotaur. Whatever. I want to appreciate the smooth jazz that is Apatos's level. It's good music. The entire soundtrack in Sonic Unleashed is so fucking brilliant. I love it. I loves it. I'm getting these rings because, again, I'm still trying to get S ranks on all these things. And, uh, ring count, uh, the amount of damage you. the amount of score you get from, from dealing out damage to enemies. You're always encouraged to do quick time events to the bigger guys because you get a lot of critical bonus points from doing that. And how it works with the HD enemies is the more you hit them, the lower their health gets. You can see their health bar, like, right under their character. And when it starts getting halfway, a little, like, flame rises above their head, or at least this little teardrop, or I don't know what it's supposed to be. But <laughs> once you see that, even still, you want to hit them a little bit more till the health is even lower, because the lowest that their health is, the easier the quick time events will be when you try and do it on them. So if he's, like, half health and you try doing quick time events, the line will go by super fast. And if you don't push the button in time, he just kicks you off and starts attacking you again. But if he's, like, one sliver of health left, one tiny bit of health left, and you do a quick time event, you'll have lots of time to do A or X or whatever it tells you to do. And, uh, 
you know, it's great for taking out some of the bigger guys. You get like a critical 9,000 point bonus. So if you're trying to get S ranks, you want to start doing quick time events on the big guys, you know. As I said before, when it comes to platforming, hold the X button whenever you can because that just makes a lot of the jumps way easier. Timing the button press is a bad decision. Sometimes it can get you killed. So always hold X every time you're jumping for a new ledge or whatever. It's just a lot simpler to do it that way. Mash and B to open doors, because that's what Kratos did. <laughs> Uh, this game also has experience uh, leveling up stuff. Like, when I did the Wii levels, you saw my health bar was huge because I'm playing an old save file. Here I'm playing a traditional save file that started from the game. Uh, that I started from the game. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so, you know. When you kill enemies, they drop these yellow diamonds, and those yellow diamonds are what you use to get experience points. Boom! 40,000 points for taking out that big ogre. boo ya! <laughs> and I took out that guy really fast because in the pots and vases and stuff coming up to this fight, there were all kinds of these bonus little items you can pick up. There are lots of bonus items that can fill your unleash meter, that can give you health, that can raise your defense and raise your attack power. So I picked up this little claw thing that gave the werehog an orange aura and it made him do double damage. So when I did my Y button attack on the big ogre guy, it drained his health like crazy fast, and it allowed me to use the quick time event rather quickly on him. The big guy can be trouble when he starts doing his ground pound kind of moves, and we'll be seeing more of that enemy type later, but uh, Tails, you had nothing to worry about. That guy was nothing compared to me. <laughs> I'm the great Clement. The greatest quote ever from Sonic, right here. Oh yeah, that's right, baby! <laughs> I love his S rank quote, that's the greatest thing in the world. Ah, uh, but yeah, that was a 10 minute long level. And that's only one Werehog level of many in this game! So we're done with the Apatos continent, ladies and gentlemen, at long last, at part 4. And I'm going to upgrade the combat and strength because uh, that's the stuff I want Werehog to excel in. Um, and as soon as the shops open up, we'll have a lot easier of a time getting experience. But uh, yeah, that's Werehog. Finally, we're moving on to a different area. So uh, have some cutscene. Hey, Tails. Sonic? What are you doing out here? Sonic, is that really you? That's a new look. What happened? You know me. Never a dull moment. Want some chocolate? Uh, thanks. That's some story. I'll bet that means that you turning into that and the planet breaking apart are somehow related. I need to find Eggman and make him fix this, and fast! About that, I think I know someone who might know something about what's going on here. Oh, really? Professor Pickle over at Spagonia University. I came to this city to gather some data. If we add that to his research findings, we might be able to get to the bottom of all this. Spagonia? That's a continent over. An easy jog if the planet weren't broken. No problem. My Tornado One will get us there in a flash! Let's get going! Leave it to you, Tails! Let's get moving!